What is up, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Spinal Corner with Dr. Joey Kramer here at Hope Upper Cervical Spine Center. Today, we are going to continue our discussion about the human nerve system and our methodical systematic approach to deductively understanding the reason and rational rationale behind implementing upper cervical chiropractic care into your life and how it delivers the results that you have been seeking that have not been delivered with other intervention. So far, we've gone through several episodes where we have talked about the idea of what constitutes the human nerve system. We also talked about what the role of the human nerve system is. We discussed the idea of signs and symptoms associated with an interruption to the human nerve system. And we also discussed the idea of adaptation. We finished up last week with this idea of how do we can improve or destroy nerve system function. And today we are going to take like a, a right turn and we are going to dive into this idea of what is disease or dis hyphen ease. And this is where we're going to start getting more into the upper cervical understanding of what we are looking at and what we are trying to help a patient understand when it comes to restoring normal neurological integrity, utilizing upper cervical care. And so let's get the good old screen share going here so we can start moving down this path. But what we are going to be looking at and what we are going to be seeing today is this idea of the question that I have to present to you, which is called, what is dis-ease, dis-ease, not to be confused with disease, right? Disease is what we are educated about, what we are indoctrinated to in the Western paradigm. And this idea that there is a disorder of structure or function in a human animal or plant especially one that has a known cause and a distinctive group of symptoms. I would argue that on this, when we have disease defined, that when we start talking about Meniere's or we start talking about tinnitus or vertigo, are we going to brain fog? Are we discuss thyroid? Are we discuss POTS or blood pressure regulated issues? Um, this little problem we have here about known cause, <laughs> very interesting because Really, if you go on Mayo Clinic and look at this, there are no known causes to many of these things. As opposed to this idea that we propose in upper cervical chiropractic, which is the idea of dis-ease, or a lack of, meaning dis, like dysfunction, which is Latin for the worm lack, and then ease, which would be normalcy, right, or function, or function, right, on those things. So a lack of ease, and we specifically are talking about the uh, human nerve system, and it caused, it is the known cause is by what we refer to as a subluxation. What this means for you and what you need to understand and what I need you to comprehend on a very, very basic level is that when we went through this idea of a neurological system that has a symptom that is due to overwhelming stress response causing maladaptation, that is what we refer to in chiropractic as a subluxation. And that is what we measure inside of our practice, meaning we are measuring the expression of the human nervous system, utilizing the tools and mechanisms that we have. You see, when, when multiple patients come through, they ask me this question about, hey, doc, you know, why are you so much different than a full spine doctor? Well, the answer is very easy is that number one, if you don't measure it, it doesn't exist. And number two, if you don't measure it, how do you improve it? You see this idea of being able to take your hand and like palpate a spine and say, oh, this bone's out of place is very low level validity, right? When we have x-ray available, when we have comb beam CT available, we have these biomechanical models of looking at what the bone structure is doing. And then we also have this idea of saying, oh, you feel better. That's a good measurement, right? Well, I mean, I can drink a fifth of tequila and I'll feel just fine, right? Or I could go down a bottle of Tylenol. I won't feel a thing whatsoever, I guarantee you. So feelings are not a good uh, validity, right? That's not a good measure of progress of your, of your care inside of a practice. You see, you guys do this all the time in the Western Medical Society, and we do it very simple. We measure blood pressure. You measure blood. 
right? You look at that from like, you know, what your chemical constitutions are and you can dive down into various areas, right? You can look at like your thyroid, you can look at liver enzymes, you can look at heart, cardiac, right? You can go into all those issues along those lines, right? This is no different in the upper cervical profession, except for we need to have a gold standard of how we evaluate a patient for the presence of dis hyphen ease. And that is done in a twofold manner. And this twofold manner, let me get my screen moving here, is done very, very straightforward. Number one, you need to have thermography. And we discussed this in our adaptation um, YouTube. So if you haven't gone through adaptation and looked at how you measure neurological performance, you need to go refresh yourself and watch that. The second gold standard is going to be an x-ray, and that is going to be of the upper cervical spine. And so it's super important when we start navigating these things and we start talking about this idea of dis hyphen ease, because this is nothing more than a problem with the nervous system. And we have to evaluate the expression of the nervous system using thermography. And if you remember what we discussed in those videos prior on YouTube, the measurement of the nervous system is done with a graphical system in which we know that three straight lines is an ideal functioning neurological system and a repeatable graph that has a curve inside of it over time is a sign of maladaptation, meaning you are not adapting, meaning you are moving yourself towards a disease presentation, disease as in the symptomatic disease. This is also a dis hyphen ease because this is a measurement of the nervous system that is not functioning. But the question we have not answered after this is how do we know that there's a problem that can be fixed? And this is where we look at x-rays because x-rays are really, really good at helping you understand a dis hyphen ease state or what we could also call a subluxated state in the upper cervical field. And when you have a subluxation, you have four components that have to be present all four of them have to be accounted for. And two of them are accomplished by using the x-ray. The other two are used by measuring it with thermography. Now in this, what I know is that when we look at an x-ray, many of you have gone in, you've sat down with an MD or you've sat down with a chiropractor in the past and they try to scare the hell out of you, right? You can go watch my YouTube video on what is normal and what is not normal on an x-ray. But for shortened purposes, we know that your neck should have a curve in it. That's super important, right? That's an ideal. And if we look at you from front to back, right, your spine should be straight up and down. These are like our normals that we're going to measure. But if we start to have problems where we start to see the spine go this way, and we start to see your spine do this thing, right? So if we're looking this way, and we're looking this way, right, then we got some issues. And this is a sign of abnormal neurological function because what runs through your spine from here all the way down to your tailbone? That's going to be your spinal cord, right? We have to go back to our anatomy lesson that we had in the first episode to understand what we're looking at now. What occurs right here, right? This is the lower one third of your brain stem, right? Super important. We need to know what these things are and what these structures are because if we have abnormal spinal biomechanics throughout the cervical spine, you will have abnormal spinal cord function, abnormal brainstorm function, which will create that wonderful word that you all know, disease, right? In my world, it will create the other form, which is dis-ease, meaning that we know that there's a known cause. It's due to the spine and it's causing a impingement or a impractical uh, firing of the human nervous system. And so my job in here and what I do in the upper cervical world is that we look for dis-ease and we try to find the sole cause of that. We call it one cause, right? This idea that there is a single subluxated vertebrae that will unlock the potential and it will move you from this state of non-adaptation into a state of adaptation. And over time, you will generate what we all desire, which is health. And so in this episode, the idea that I want you to take away, the idea that I want you to gather from this is this. In the medical profession, we have disease. Disease is really simple. COVID-19 is a disease that we talk about. Uh, Meniere's is a disease. Trigeminal neuralgia is a disease. These are all areas that we say that we do not have a known cause for. We know that you're going to have to learn to live with it. And we know that you can manage symptoms over time. This is an unacceptable answer, in my opinion. In my opinion, there is a known cause for many of these issues. And that known cause is a dis hyphen ease. A dis hyphen ease means that the human nervous system, meaning your brain to your body connection, which is measured and manifested through the expression of human intelligence, is being interfered with. 
And we need to figure out where that interference has taken place. If it's not done by a pathological substance, if it's not done by a narcotic, if it's not done by many things that can influence this, we know that the overwhelming evidence will line up and suggest to you that it is a result of not adapting to your environment in a proper way. And when you are not adapting, it is only the result of one thing, which is a spinal subluxation located in the upper cervical spine. This is qualified for you by evaluating thermography. And when you use thermography, we can compare notes between your progress towards health or your progress towards dis-ease, which would be the non-adapting side of things. And if you are living in this environment, what we call non-adapting, you need to have an upper cervical x-ray series because upper cervical x-rays will show you the location of the subluxation. Then over time, the goal is to evaluate this upper cervical structure, the spinal structure, and how with a methodical approach of applying an adjusted thrust, we restore normal to the human body. And once you are moved from this dis-ease state, and you move into this ease state, you will build the foundation for allowing your body to express health. Now, mind you, this is something that has to be maintained over time because you can go back to this just like you can go back and forth between these disease and health states. So the premise is to ensure that once you are unsubluxated, once you have a straight line graph, once you are adapting your environment, is that you periodically make sure that you have this thing happening so that throughout your normal circadian rhythm or your neurological rhythm, which happens in 90-day cycles, you are continually expressing health. Otherwise, you will start trending towards the non-adaptation phase and you will move into the disease paradigm. So to summarize this whole entire thing, the idea of dyshyphenes is an evaluation of the integrity of the human nerve system through the use of thermography and x-rays. Next week, we will come back and we will go further in depth with how we can correct dis-ease and why upper cervical makes so much sense. A lot of topics covered today, a lot of previous topics and other videos you can go watch and brush up on. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box. We'll be back next week with another great episode. Peace.